Um, hello. Uh, yeah. Alright, haven't done this in a while. I figured as a way to focus, I'm gonna stream some code. I'm working on Aliverse today. And what am I doing? So I'm working on audio. And uh, it's there is some weird, like microphone audio just sounds like shit. You can't even tell what people are saying. Other audio is working fine, and I show you. I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. But in order to debug it, instead of sitting there with a GDB attached to a real-time application, which is not fun, but would probably solve my issue a lot faster than the way I'm gonna explain now that I'm doing it, is I'm building my own debugging tool, because of course I am. So this whole project is a VR application, uh, a network VR application, which uh, an Allo app that shows up in VR, um, and it's also a desktop Windows and Mac app at the same time. So if I click this button here, now I'm connected to a place here the same way that uh, if I connect with a uh, visor, I'm also connected to it. So Nevis place, that's the URL to it. So here I am. I'm in the space. And this app is also in the space. It's not really visible in VR, but it's in there. So if I inspect entities here, like when I move my hand, I can see my hand moving here. Um, so that's cool. I can also inspect audio tracks. I'm supposed to be able to inspect audio tracks. But it's not working. Microphone is open. Let's let's launch uh, the jukebox. did I do? Okay, yeah. Git stash, git pull, git stash pop. What's not committed? Oh, the roof. Okay. Hmm. Uh, git submodule update. And then we run it. Not to localhost, but to Nevin's place. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So my desktop visor is not even sending audio, but the thing you see here is this jukebox app. So let's Press play. Ah, uh, yeah. So that's clearly working fine. Okay. All right. Why is my visor not sending audio? Let's see. Opening the microphone. Welcome to unnamed place. Here's my head. Creating mesh. Huh. All right. Let's let's figure that out. Uh, we go to our sound engine. <laughs> so yeah, you haven't seen me streaming for a while, so you haven't seen my fun, enjoyable um, adventures with OpenSL on Android. Apparently, 
you can't query OpenSL for and asking it, what kind of format would you uh, prefer me to record the microphone from? And like, you can't just tell it, hello, give me this and it'll transcode it for me. No, you have to, at least as far as I've understood, iterate all the audio formats and try them out until you find one. So I've made, <laughs> it just tries a bunch of different combos, like every combo of combination of these until he finds one to work with finds one that works um, and we saw in the log before that I closed for some stupid reason that it did open the microphone but why isn't it playing so when the head is added Oh, I thought I fixed this bug. Apparently I forgot to push it. Uh, or maybe it just didn't pull. Uh, yeah, it just didn't pull. Okay, fine. There we go. Do I have any local changes? Yes, Let's, those are fine. I'll just keep those. And do I have any sub modules? Okay, I've made a change in lever and in open AL. Okay. Let's see if this works. So, uh, while this is compiling, I can tell you about this inspector app. So, <laughs> I thought, like, I felt really stupid building this because I thought it would take like a week to build. Um, I basically just added sub modules for everything I thought I'd need. I needed AlloNet, of course, to talk to the Alloverse network. I wanted the Allo UI framework so I'd get some uh, utilities to work with the AlloNet. Uh, uh, framework. Oh, there's Orphis. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah. Uh, well, you, I can't build VR tools in Mac OS. I guess with the set of tools I have chosen, I could actually work on this project in Mac OS, but this computer is just... It's faster than my $3,000 iMac that I had, so for like half that price so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm using Windows I'm not entirely used to it yet oh hey John nice got some viewers um, yeah well this machine is kind of nice I'm not used to it it's really nice actually to work on not quite used to Windows but working out all right so what was I saying yeah this stupid project the debug inspector uh, so we got Alanet for network, and we got Allo UI for some uh, uh, UI tools when building apps for the Alloverse. I figured using Lua for everything else, so let's use uh, LuaJet to write the, the app logic for this little debug app. Then I wanted to use a simple cross-platform UI framework, and I'd never used their GUI before so I figured let's do that and I found a Lua JIT wrapper so I can just use the C API straight from Lua as is just uh, it just adds some niceties to it uh, and then you need GLF W to present graphics to the screen so that's this little app here and it's really really simple um, if you haven't used your GUI before I can give you a quick quick run through let's see where's the setup so I just copy pasted this from the examples some stupid shit to find DLLs um, some stupid shit to find the um, uh, Alonet DLL and then we set up DRM GUI where we need the OpenGL framework 
Um, we need a MGUI actually works on top of a few different things, but here we're using the GLF we if W1. We create a window, we make it current, we create an MGUI, uh, we initialize it with the window, then we get the code for this app, and then while the application is not closing, clear the screen and draw the app, and then swap buffers. Simple. And the app itself, um, it has a draw function which draws uh, the MGUI windows that I've set up. Uh, and uh, let's look at what, what doing UI in MGUI looks like. If you're used to doing a Mac app or an iPhone app or even a web page, this is very, very different. It's This framework is built to do, for doing debug UI on top of your existing game. So it's supposed to run every frame with the game. Since you're rendering the screen every frame anyway, uh, there's really no point in not rendering every frame. So uh, old style, it renders the, the whole UI every frame. And it's very, very imperative. Instead of creating a window, every frame you say begin and the name of the window. And then every frame, say the UI element that should be in that window. Here I say I want a text field and then I want some input and then I want a button. And instead of adding a callback to the button, I just say if the button is pressed, because remember we're drawing at every frame. So the drawing and the checking for the button clicked is done with the same function called. Super weird. So if it is pressed, I just create a new window into this truck that we're looping over every uh, frame. Uh, which is this window down here. So this code here is everything that's needed to create this window, add all the elements to it, and add the code to make this interactive and do stuff, which is pretty cool, I think. And then there's a window for uh, the entities. This is it, actually. This UI is this code. It's, it's really simple. Um, create it. Uh, we make a window, uh, we want a table with three columns, um, we want uh, the headers, and then for each entity in the world state, and this is updated from the server, so this is going to be up to date every frame. And we just print the ID and the position of the thing, and then we show it. Simple. And then audio. Here's the interesting stuff. So we have a callback every time there is some audio. And I just, I have a, a list of buffers for X values and Y values. And I have a s second worth of data. So every time there is more data, I fill, I fill it up with incoming data. And then when the data is full, I just start from the beginning. So I get like this rolling window of um, audio data so I can look at it, what it looks like over time, for one second at least. Um, I, it's actually, I actually skip three out of four samples because otherwise this graphing library freaks out. It's too much data. I can't draw 48,000 points every frame, apparently. And then I just uh, plot that, uh, the X against the Y. That's really it, and that's just a, a, a floatery. And with LuaJIT, this is actually a C floatery, as if you'd done malloc size of float times actual sample count, and it allocates an actual C buffer. So LuaJIT is really cool in that way that you're writing um, basically C, but using Lua syntax. All right, so let's try this new microphone code that we just pulled and see if we're getting the microphone here. So here we see that when I'm talking, we're actually getting audio data here. So it looks right. The audio, re audio really is coming through correctly. And if I play this audio, we can see that... <laughs> Why are these... 
it going at different speeds. That's <laughs> that's not right, is it? Uh, so this should be a second worth of data. Let's time this. Can we can we can we do like a stopwatch? Okay. So when it reaches the start and so it's two seconds. We're sending half the amount of data that we're supposed to. And of course that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Already this tool is useful. Just look at it. It it really does look no it's it's mono. Um, um it, this is a single track, so the way Alverse does um uh, stereo is that you, had, you allocate a track each um, for it. Um, and I do request a mono track from. Let's see, where's the sound engine? Yeah, I request a mono, mono audio track from OpenSL. I get a mono audio stream, and then all the Aloverse audio APIs are also mono. So let's see, where do I send the data? It's on update, I think. Yeah. Create a new sound data, single channel. Send off. I request 960 bytes of data. And then I send it onto the network. Huh. Interesting. Uh, I have I have not run into any weirdness with Opus with regards to audio channels. It's been fine configuring it for a mono. So this API here is the same API. I'm I'm sending microphone audio the same way I'm sending uh, Super Nintendo music in the jukebox. So I can show you how that works just real quick. Uh, let's uh, da -da 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 -da. no, this is the wrong repo. Sorry. Oh, I'm gonna have to stop it. Okay, fine. No. And here we are. Jimmy player generate audio. I, in this case, I'm the GME player. That's libgme, really cool audio emulation library that can emulate pretty much any retro console audio chip. It gives me stereo, so I just split the interleaved audio into two uh, mono buffers. <laughs> of course you do. And uh, then I only send the left track because there is something really seriously really wrong with uh, my stereo when um, when I'm trying to play two audio tracks in the device right now. Right now. I'm focusing on just getting the audio correct, then we can do fancy stuff like stereo. So this call is the same call as this call, and this audio, this mono audio here is apparently it's... There's nothing wrong with this audio. Hey, Bengen. So... <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, but I'll, one thing at a time, one thing at a time. Uh, all right, now we got another audio track, damn it. <laughs> so I don't think this is a problem with Opus at all. Oh, oops. Oh, shit. Wait, why is there no microphone audio now? No, wait, this is the microphone. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So, why... So, what am I doing here? I'm sending 960 samples every frame. Here, I'm also sending 960 frames. Hmm. Um, 
let's see. So, you know, when I play the microphone audio here in Lever, it's a spatialized. So it's kind of hard to debug it. I just kind of want to open it in an editor. I do have code to do that, so maybe I should just do that. <laughs> Thanks, Penguin. So, hmm, hmm. This, I mean, looking at this waveform, it, it's looking fine. And there, there's. No data missing here. Oh, look at that. Oh, I see. there are some. Maybe there are some discontinuities in here, actually. Oh, that was a definite discontinuity. Yep. Can I can I pause this? Well, if I talk, no, it's gonna it's gonna keep rolling. No, it's gonna stop roll as soon as I stop sending data. So if I talk for a full second, blah 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 then we have a nice waveform to look at. That's true Orphis, but a big discontinuity is still gonna be somewhat visible. Hmm I mean this doesn't look right. Okay, let's let's Stop skipping and get a proper waveform. Head on over to Nevin's place and inspect all the audio in there. And then start sending some microphone data. Hello, 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 hello. And you see it's uh, it, my graphing library is only able to draw this much audio. Stir Huh. So if did, did I mess up with my buffer skipping? Because this seems to no, it's about two seconds. This is about half a second of data. That's fine. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna talking, 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 talking. There we go. <laughs> uh, good luck, man. See you later. You see, when I zoom in, the data is visible. So it's just too many points for this graphing library to visualize. But this should give us enough data to properly see any discontinuities. Maybe I should, maybe I should have whistled. Hmm. I mean, this could, this could be a discontinuity. What I want to do is I want to identify two discontinuities, and that's when, when you know, when the obviously there's a buffer, and then the next piece of buffer obviously doesn't belong to the edge of it. So there's uh, either missing or duplicate or otherwise broken data. That's a discontinuity. Uh, this could be another one. Get a waveform in my sound pack. What do you, what do you mean by? Sound pack. Oh, if I can generate a waveform. Yeah, but I wanna, I wanna. I look at your CT tools. CT. I'm feeling stupid. What's CT? Corona trigger. Uh, ah, you mean it like generates, but the, the the jukebox is working fine. It's there's something wrong with the microphone specifically. There needs, I need to specifically record a sine wave from a microphone. You should be able to do that. There we go. It's not as even. Oh, that was there. Really high frequency tone. Let's do that again. Ah, oh, shit. That was the wrong debugger. 
Alright, let's try that again. I guess I could like generate a noise on my phone or something. Um, yeah, that's definitely a discontinuity. Okay. Yeah, you know, this was a fun tool to use, but to build, but honestly, I need an audio editor to actually properly look at this. Or do I? Okay, here's a problem. Here's a problem. Here's a problem. That's, I mean, that's, that's pretty consistent. I can tell from just looking at it. So, let's look at these numbers. We have, it's somewhere around, 1280. The next one is yeah, this is com gonna commit to 980 samples between each. So I guess it's not really anything new. So this is uh, about uh, 13, 742, and then it's like 14, 700. Obvious, it's pretty obvious what's going on here. Is that a discontinuity? No, but this is right. Yeah, that's totally a oh, I can do this right there. We go. Oh, geez, why didn't I do that from the start? Is my buffer accumulating samples before you process them? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, there are uh, layers here. So there is um, at the bottom of the stack, at least at the bottom of the stack that I'm compiling, there's OpenSL. It has a ring buffer. The code is, uh, yeah, of course it's related. Uh, let's see, I'm just going to 15665. So at the bottom there's OpenSL, there's a ring buffer there, there's definitely a bug somewhere around that ring buffer. Um, um, because if, if I ask for if I ask for just nine please give me nine hundred and sixty samples, uh, it works fine on desktop, but it crashes uh, on quest. Um, and I think just the Android I don't think the I mean, OpenSL is an Android thing, so I don't think the bug is so in OpenSL. But then, wait, is the ring buffer in OpenSL? No, the ring buffer is in OpenAL, which is the layer above. And the, I don't think a lot of people record audio with OpenAL on Android. Or if they do, um, they don't do it the way I do, because that, that code is fucking terrible, and it's broken and it crashes and I don't think it's my fault could be um, so um, what's the layer above that the layer above is a lover the VR engine it doesn't have uh, it doesn't have uh, buffering at all and then the layer above that is this code so you got Android OpenSL OpenAL lover and then Alivers. The only buffer that's compiled here is in OpenAL. And it's probably broken. So my workaround to make it at least not crash on the quest is to create a really big buffer and then ask for just 960 bytes and please put it into that buffer. Um, and that way, if there's a buffer overrun, it won't crash. But apparently there is a buffer overrun, otherwise uh, that it wouldn't have crashed. But uh, it's a fair point. Let's, uh, let's stop doing that hack and see if that changes anything. So let's do 960 samples at a time see what happens mm, here we go so 
So let's do the sine. Let's do a sine wave generator. You don't want to listen to me whistling. I think I have one on here. Signal generator. Here we go. Why is it not doing anything? Oh. Shh. Hey, Gromick. Morning. So let's look at this thing. Do, do, do. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's broken. That's definitely broken. Let's uh, zoom out some more. Yeah, that's uh, that's proper discontinuity right there. So how? Can I tell what's going on here? Hmm. I sort of want to know what happens over time. Perhaps if I did a rising sweep? I could tell the difference over time. Hmm. Hmm. So one thing I could do, should I, yeah, a sweep. Let's do a sweep. Can I do a sweep in this app? Menu, tone, add-ons. No. Sweep generator. <laughs> 35 kroner. Jeez. Yeah, exactly. Um, jeez. Whatever. Fixing this bug is worth 35 kroner. I could just... Yeah, f fine. Whatever. I just... <laughs> I'll just skip a coffee today. Uh, okay, sweep. Oh yeah, that's annoying. This is gonna be a really annoying stream for you all. Sorry about that. Okay, that's good. Let's look at this thing. time domain, I can't really tell what's happening. If this was in the frequency domain, that w this would have been a lot more obvious, but it's not. So... Um... Hmm. So... I guess I could figure out the frequency of this thing and the frequency of this thing and it would tell me something. <laughs> oh jeez. Debugging real-time systems is hard. Oh, and that's gonna be in samples. <sighs> Alright, so we got 4607 4607 minus Four, five, six, two. So this will give us the amount of time for one waveform in samples. So that's 45 samples. So divided, its sample rate is 48,000. So we've moved that much of a second. 
So in hurt, so I invert that, right? Oh, it's embarrassing doing math in, in front of in front of the stream. But a thousand? Yeah, I bet that could be a thousand. This is supposed to go from four forty to seventeen sixty in one second. Why'd I pick that interval? Okay. If I pick like one thousand to two thousand, it would have been a lot easier to do the math here, but so uh, let's, I did that. That was this one, right? 63, yeah. Um, and now we have, after the discontinuity, the frequency is one full way from here. 60, the bigger one is 4703, put that in here, and this is uh, 1066, 1090, what does that tell us? That it's a very small gap at least. So we are going from 1760 to 440 in one second. So we're sweeping over this frequency range in one second. So in, a, I don't know, just you know, in a millisecond be 1 hertz per second, 1.3 hertz per millisecond. Okay. So here we got about 30, 30 hertz movement, which should be 30 about 20, 25 milliseconds then. Okay. But these two points should be very close in time. Like... Uh, 30 milliseconds? If counted in samples... How many? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sawtooth generated in Audacity. A sawtooth. How would that? How would that help? <sighs> oh, you mean like uh, the the? If, mm, so I could just watch the amplitude peaks. But I can't have one sawtooth across. But I, I could modulate the, the amplitude by a sawtooth. That's true. Grummick, what we're doing here. We're figuring out why data is missing. There is something wrong, wrong with the microphone audio coming from Aloverse. Uh, it just sounds wrong. We're trying to figure out why that is by looking at the raw waveforms. <laughs> One sawtooth wouldn't be audible, like you do a, a, a sawtooth over uh, like a second, you can't hear that, but I guess they're pretty low, whatever. Let's, 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 let's dump this to a file and look at it in Audacity actually. Yes, fine, let's come to this. So I have code to dump all incoming buffers, actually. So... Debug audio, I set that to 1. I build this. Let's... Yeah, I like the... 
discard projects. I like the I like the idea of amplitude modulating the amplitude. Let's generate a tone. Um, I think I can do if I do a I think a sign is gonna transport best. So I'm gonna do a sign. I'm gonna do exactly two seconds of it. And then can I how do I I want to Well A sawtooth, that's just uh that's just a fade in. So In the amount of time we're looking at, like we're we're looking at milliseconds here. I'm not going to be able to detect like the the minute difference in peaks here, especially not when it's coming in from a microphone. But let's start out by just actually looking at this the incoming audio in Audacity. So let's run this, and this is going to dump some PCM files. In, in the same folder as the app. So I'm going to start up here and uh, I'm going to connect here and then I'm going to just talk for a while and uh, see what happens. Just keep a constant uh, piece of audio coming in and maybe I'll do a mm, and maybe I'll do a, a, a sweep like this. Maybe I'll do a tone like this. And then uh, I'll stop this, and now there should be a a file in Nevin Dev uh, Allo Inspector. Hello. Go open Audacity. Import raw data. It's gonna be in Allo Inspector. It's gonna be this thing. It's going to be signed little Indian mono 48,000 hertz. Here it is. Let's throw away this track for a while and uh, see what's just keep a constant uh, piece of audio coming in. Maybe I'll do a, mm, maybe I'll do a, a sweep like this. Maybe I'll do a tone like this. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's missing exactly half the audio, isn't it? Here and then I'm going to just talk for a while and uh, see what's just keep a constant uh, piece of audio coming in. Maybe I'll do a, mm, maybe I'll do a, a sweep like this. Maybe I'll do a tone like this. And then I'll stop. <laughs> it sounds kind of funny, actually. Here, and then I'm gonna just talk for a while. And uh, see, let's just keep a constant uh, piece of audio coming in. Maybe I'll do a, mm, and maybe I'll do a, a sweep like this. Maybe I'll do a tone like this. I got missing audio. Huh, what do you think it? A stereo, but then I'll be missing more audio. Oh, okay, we can try it. If it had been half speed, then that would have been indicative that I just dumped stereo data. But I want to hear what this sounds like in, in, in stereo anyway. So let's do it. 48,000. Yeah. So that's not it. <laughs> You're legit. Um, these are very small. Can I zoom in? Wait, I'm not great at... No, I don't want to increase the gain. I just want to... Uh, get... change the range. There we go. I bet there's a shortcut for this, but whatever. Yeah, I don't know what I hoped to accomplish by looking at this zoomed in, but it's pretty clear from just listening at it. <laughs> Funny Orpheus. So, are we missing... What are we missing? Are we missing every other chunk of 960 bytes are we missing or sample sorry <laughs> uh, 
are we missing uh, every other sample? No, that would have actually sounded just high pitched. No, I think we're missing every other buffer here. Then I'll stop. Time stretch this. Does that sound right then? I mean, not right, it's gonna sound wrong, but does it sound like I'm talking at the right speed? Change speed uh, 2x, no, 0.5x. <laughs> okay, uh, the pitch is wrong too. So, the, jeez, yeah, so the pitch is right. Here, and then I just talk for a while. This is, that's, that's my pitch. That's what I sound like, actually. Uh, so what kind of, I want to keep, I want to keep the, here, and then I just talk for a while. And uh, just, just, just keep a uh, constant. Here and then I'm gonna just talk for a while and uh, see what's just keep a constant uh, piece of audio. Was that uh, the speed that I talked at when I recorded it? I don't remember. Here and then I'm gonna just talk for a while and uh, see what's just keep a constant uh, piece of audio coming in and maybe I'll do a, uh, mm, yeah, maybe I'll do a, a sweep like this. Maybe I'll do a tone like this. And then I'll stop. So if this is the right tempo now, then this should be exactly one second of data. 12.5. Maybe I'll about right, but I don't want to know if it's exactly right, and I don't think it is. This is not one second. What the fuck is going on? I uh, I uh, have to speed exactly fifty percent. This is the speed it should have. No, okay, it, it is right. It is right. It's just the uh, app is a piece of shit. It said it would do a uh, uh, one second, but <laughs> this is not one second. But uh, if I if I if I press play on the on these at the exact same time, that, that's good. That's clearly the, the correct pace. Okay, so we're missing exactly half the data. Metronome map, yes, I suppose. This worked. Maybe I'll do a tone like this. Just keep a constant uh, piece of audio coming in. And maybe I'll do a, mm, yeah, maybe I'll do a, a sweep like this. I'm just fascinated by the sound of this. I, I'm gonna have to save this because it sounds really cool. 
just uh, da -da -da, create blah blah blah. I just want to save this as a. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Just. Yep, that's right. If it'd been a slight difference, then sample rate could have definitely been it. But uh, it seemed to match up exactly on the dot, actually. So we are missing exactly 50% of the data. So I'm, I'm happy with this finding. Uh, oh, no, audio. And I'm going to put that in there. I just want to save this. It's this fun sound. How do I get home? Here I am. And I want to put it in my uh, um, OneDrive. Uh, yeah. Save. Funny. Okay. Bye. All right. Half of the data is missing. Why? Why? So I'm getting really, 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 really hungry. Should break for lunch, but I'm onto something here. I like being onto something. Mm, half the data is missing. If we have a mic and the mic has collected more than 960 samples, then extract 960 samples, please. So the problem is Opus uh, requires that you send exactly 10 or 20 milliseconds of data. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you asked exactly what I was uh, explaining. So you, I have to send it in 10 or 20 millisecond chunks. Um, and nine, 960, that is 20 millise 960 samples at 48,000 hertz, uh, uh, 48,000 sample rate. That gives you exactly 20 milliseconds of data. You can change the chunk size, you know. Yes, perhaps I can, but there are a lot of layers here. Um, I mean, we got the sending client, we got the server and the receiving client. I don't want to change it in all of those places. Um, oh, okay. But you, are you saying I can set it to an arbitrary? I can I can tell Opus I can just send an arbitrary size. Ha. Huh. Okay. Let's dig into Elenet. A different size, yeah. But I don't. If I just tell it to give me what's buffered. I'm going to get different sizes every time. So um, either 960 is fine or an arbitrary size is fine. Uh, so I don't I don't want to like just change it to 9600 and see what happens. It's also, <laughs> I've actually hard-coded this size in the API, so it's actually uh, quite a few layers. They're going to break if I don't do 960. Um, well, is it this piece of shit right here? Is it? Can I, what happens if I do this? So uh, this is because I used a bigger buffer before. I wanna, wanted to make sure I just cut out the right amount. But mm, this audio has always been buggy. And it's only... I only added that hack for Quest like a few days ago, so... 
Let's see what happens if I do this. Is this a second of data? One, two, three, four, eight. That does look like a second of data, doesn't it? Jeez, okay. I'm gonna do another sweep, because that was useful. Um, let's go have a look at PCM65. Um, Audacity. Import raw data from the inspector. Signed little one channel for eight thousand. Let's see what happens. Jesus. If I do this. Is this a second of data? One, two, three, four, eight. That does look like a second of data, doesn't it? Jeez. Okay. I'm gonna do another sweep. Oh, the mother fucking idiot I am. Oh, Jesus. Oh, sorry for cursing. I'm just such an idiot. <sighs> so, uh, yeah. This. This is a string operation. So there's no... In, in Lua, there's really no buffer objects you use strings to transfer arbitrary chunks of data that's fine uh, it just it treats it as a byte buffer of um, now they, so uh, it's, this is a byte buffer so when I say get me one and then f Starting at 1, Lua is 1 base, you don't start at 0. I know that confuses a lot of people. And then I want 960. That's 960 bytes, not 960 samples. And I got 16 bits signed integers. So I actually need twice that amount. <sighs> okay, let's do this again. So this should now be correct. And we got 60. Why are these? Okay. One, two. Yeah, that's a, that looks right. So, bye. So, I'm going to make sure that this is the length and not the end index because I don't want it off by one or as well. That would really bum me out. Let's do a string sub Lua. Lua, i Lua. Manual really sucks. I just, just want a reference manual, not this piece of shit discussion. Every time there, thank you. And then sub. This is yeah. Here we go. Can I do it? Oh, there we are. String sub. S I J. That starts at I and continues until J. That's an index. If j is absent, it's minus 1, which is the string length. Okay, so we went from index at index 1. We've collected 0 bytes. So at index 2, we've collected 1 byte. We want to collect 960 times 2 bytes. So we need to go one further. There we go. Off by one errors. They're the worst. Okay, let's. I'm not even gonna look at that audio, uh, other audio I I just recorded because it's gonna have an off by one error in it. So 
just random crash somewhere usually means I just smashed the stack or heap rather. So wait, wait. This is the inspector. This is not the. Uh, I didn't crash Alvarez. I crashed the inspector. Ooh, what? Actually, what the what? What the actual what? Is this this is still running? What did I do? Oh, okay, just a random crash. Damn it. Uh, without the sub call, I'll explain in a second. So this looks like one second of audio. Do another sweep. And we can stop this. So the the reason I want the sub in here is so that I can have a bigger buffer here, so that if there's a buffer overrun in the OpenAL get data on the quest, I don't crash. I could also fix the bug, but I've been sitting with that bug for like two weeks I'm not doing that if I can work around it I'm working around it especially since lover uh, Bjorn the main Bjorn and Andy the two main maintainers of lover they both hate open L open AL with a passion and I understand them at this point I, I get it I get it so they're gonna replace it um, it's I think it's Bjorn's next priority so I don't want to fix OpenAL. I just want it to work for now because I can't build a social VR app where you can't talk to each other. I can't do that. So make it work. So that's why I want to have this huge buffer and I just want to send in a piece of it. So I want to send in a huge chunk to OpenSL and I want to send in a chunk of the exact right size to Oliver's. Haha, <laughs> deaf people. Yeah. So, what am I doing? Uh, Audacity. Maybe I should add a title to this window. Import draw data from PCM file. Uh, okay. What did I do? Okay, just a random question. What? What did I do? Okay, just a random crash. Damn it. Uh, without the subcall, I'll explain in a second. So this looks like one second of audio. Do not sleep. Then you can stop this. Uh, what? <laughs> what, what? What? What just happened? Did I did I do something wrong in the import? Uh. What? Uh, it's signed. No, it's not. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wow, why did, how did that sound, sound correctly? Jeez, wow. That sh no. What did I do? Oh, okay, just a random crash, damn it. Uh, without the sub call, I'll explain in a second. So this looks like one second of audio, do another sweep. And we can stop this. Uh, yeah, but it's 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 UDP, so I, it's fine if some packets are missing. Uh, I don't I don't need it to be perfect. I just I need it to be I need it to be okay. And we can stop the this. The rate seems about right. Yeah, okay. And it, it sounds great. Not perfect, as you're saying, but it sounds great. Uh, zoom reset. What did I do? Yeah, oh, what okay, did I do? Crash. Damn it. Uh, without the sub call, I'll explain in a second. So this, damn it. Just a random crash. Definitely some discontinuities here. Just a random crash, damn it. Just a random crash. Oh, okay, just a random crash, damn it. And what, are we, what are these spikes? Oh, okay, just a random crash. Damn it. <laughs> I, I feel you, Office. I feel you. Damn it, damn it.
Damn it. <laughs> damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Uh, is that supposed to look like that? Oh, okay, just a run. Oh, okay. Oh, 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 okay, just a, oh, okay, just a random crash. Damn it. You can hear those little, oh, okay, just a random crash. Damn it. Click a clacks. It's a little bit of, oh, okay, just a, what are these? Well, what's, what's going on here? What is going on here? What is, what is this? Yep. Oh, oh, oh. Is that it? Okay, is this 960? Uh, can you give me that in samples? Start and length 689. That's not 960. 690, 690, is it? What does it mean? I don't know. Those are so minor. I, I don't go. Well, I'll explain in a second. So this looks like one second of audio. Do another sweep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know what? Okay, wait, no, I, first I'm going to re-add this hack uh, so it doesn't crash on Quest. I'm going to make sure that this still works. We're going to do it again. Oh, jeez, why? What? Do you want to know? No, I don't actually. I, I should maybe, but what am I doing? I don't care. I don't, I'm not going to fix that bug right now. One bug at a time. Inspect the audio. Inspect the audio. How's that? That, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to stop it. Why do I close Audacity every time? Uh, Mac user, I'm used to app being open even though I closed the window. Track 68. It's a sign 16-bit. Little Indian Mono, 48,000. I wish it would just remember that at a time. Inspect the audio. Perfect. Inspect the audio. Not perfect. How's that? That, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to stop it at a time. Inspect the audio. Inspect the audio. It's not... It's, Audio. You can hear what I'm saying. It, that's it. Need you need to be able to hear what I say. Oh, you can control zoom this. Oh, that's nice. Um, push it. It's done. Did it. It's done. This is perfect. Perfect enough. Where did I? Where's my? Here it is. That was. Uh, what did I just change? I only changed things in the visor, didn't I? Uh, let's just um, uh, untrack the content. Didn't change anything in L in it, did I? Nope. Let's see, what do I have here? No, no, no. Yes. Uh, maybe don't throw away half the audio doofus. That count is in bytes, not in samples. Period, space, period, space, period. Push that. CI is going to push that. Uh, CI is going to build that. And then I'm going to try that on Quest. Uh, it's going to take uh, 10, 15 minutes for that to build. Could also whip up my Mac, make a build manually, but. Uh, Knowing build systems, I don't think that's going to be faster. I, the CI actually works, so I'm just going to wait for CI. And I'm not going to sit here and do nothing for 10 minutes uh, on a stream. So I think I'm going to I'm going to take a break, get some lunch, do some errands, 
get refreshed, and uh, then maybe stream some more later. Uh, thanks for the help with uh, debugging, and thanks for watching. As uh, really cool having you. Um, see you in an hour or three. Um, have a nice lunch wherever you are. Bye.